I wanted to make this video today to uh, show you or tell you three ways on how to be a great electronic technician. Three skills you need to become a great electronic technician. First skill you would need to become a great electronic technician is you gotta you gotta have the ability to solve problems. You gotta be a problem solver because if you're an electronic tech, your job is pretty much to know your electronics and solve a problem. Whether whether you're looking for a faulty component, you're looking for an open trace, maybe a burnt component somewhere. Well, whatever the issue is, your, your job as an electronic tech pretty much is to troubleshoot the board, find that component or issue and fix it and then test it. And that's your job as an electronic tech. So first thing you have to learn how to do is you have to get in the right, right mindset of or saying that, hey, I have to learn how to be a problem solver. And how do you become a problem solver, right? Some of these things don't come easy to other people, but you gotta get, first thing you gotta do is you gotta get into that mindset of I'm a problem solver. So when you have an issue that comes up, you're already in that mindset and you're, you're thinking like, okay, here, I've, I've got this printed circuit board, or I've got this power supply, or what is it, whatever that you're working on, you, you're thinking, setting your mind straight already saying that hey i'm gonna solve this problem and then you're gonna you're gonna have to ask yourself a series of questions to lead you to where the, the problem is at and you will have to pretty much say okay what is this thing supposed to do and then you say okay now let's figure out what is it doing or what is it that it is not doing and as you ask these questions it will lead you down a path to solving the problem. So for example, let's say you're, you you get a power supply, a linear power supply, and let's say, well, I, there's a 24 volt output. I, I put 115 volts AC in, and I'm not getting my 24 volts uh, DC out, and that's my issue. So you're thinking like, okay, this is a a power supply. I'm, a, I'm the electron tech. I need to solve the problem of why I'm missing my 24 votes. So you're going to have to ask yourself, okay, are they getting in a hundred and are they actually putting in 115 volts AC? All right? So you got to figure that out. So you say, okay, if I put in 115 volts, I'm going to get 24 out. And next thing you would, you would do is, okay, let, let me, let me do a, a quick visual on it first and figure out to see if there there's anything that's burnt on here right so you're, you're going through the process of of solving this problem you wouldn't want to power this thing up without doing a visual right but you as a as the problem solver you're going through these steps so how do i solve this problem how do i i fix this how do i narrow it down right and fix it and test it and, and bring this power supply back to life so if we go back to the power supply, you're looking, you're going through, through these steps of solving these problems from uh, going from the easiest to the hardest, right? So, so you, you don't want to apply power yet. You want to do a visual and you look at it and you, you, you look at the visual and then you, you check some of your components, make sure not, nothing is shorted, check the fuses, check the bridge rectifier, check some of the dials there, uh, check, check up. Uh, your capacitors right as you're doing a visual and maybe even voltage regulators in there and see if see if any of those things are short right but you you but you got to have the right mindset of i am a problem solver and the problem is that i have a 24 volt dc that is missing and if you if you get yourself in the right mindset and you learn how to solve problems and you'll definitely over time get better as you, you get your mindset correct. But your job as an electron tech, the first thing is I'm a problem solver. How do I solve this problem? 
So if you want to be a better tech, first step is, you know, having the right mindset, uh, telling yourself that you are a problem solver. And that's the first step to becoming a great electronic technician. Second step to become an electronic technician is you have to know electronics. How are you going to troubleshoot electronics if you don't know electronics? So if I call myself electronic tech and I don't know anything about electronics, how do I even know where to start? For example, let's take a transistor, right? A transistor has three pins. It has a base. It has a collector, it has an emitter, right? So basically, if I simplify this to understand a transistor, I would say, well, a transistor works like a switch. So if I, if I put voltage on the base, let's say this is an MPN transistor. If I put voltage on the base, then current is going to run through it. And then pretty much is going to act like a switch and my collector and my emitter is going to basically short together and that's where my switch comes from so current is going to flow from from current i'm, I'm sorry from the collector down to the emitter so if, if if i know how how a transistor works then i know how to test it All right so so in theory that's basically how it works but if, if I if I know more about a transistor and I say, well, wait, wait a minute, a transistor is like two diodes back to back where the anodes are pretty much tied together. So so if, if I know that I say, hey, if I get my multimeter and I set it to the diode setting and I know how to test a diode and a transistor is nothing but two diodes back to back with the anodes tied together, hey, I just have to make sure that I get two voltage drop across it. So it, it, if I know that and I say, okay, I gotta get two voltage drop. And again, this is an NPN. Basically, I will, put, I will put my red lead on the base and then my common, which is the black lead on the collector. And I'm gonna get a voltage drop, right? It could be anywhere from like 0.3 volts to 0.7 volts. And then if I leave my red on my base and I move my black lead to the emitter, I know that, hey, I'm gonna get, I'm supposed to get a voltage or a diode drop. And, it, and I, should, I should see a 0.3 or up to 0.7 voltage drop on there. And if I, if I measure that, I know that more likely is my transistor is good, right? And, and basically that's that's how I, I would test a transistor by understanding how a transistor works. So it's like a switch. It's like two dials back to back with the anodes tied together and I know how it works. So I go and test it. And I was like, well, this transistor is not short. It's testing the way it's supposed to test because of the two dial drops, the two dials back to back. So step, step two of being a great Electronic tech is you have to understand your your electronics first, right? You have to understand how how a transistor works. You have to understand how a diode works. You have to understand how a capacitor works. You have to understand how transformer works, so you know how to test it. Oh, as far as a transformer, oh, which side is my primary? Is there a tap in there? Secondary? How many windings do I have on my secondary side? Well, if I know know about transformers, I'll know how to test it. So second thing is you have to understand your electronics. If you want to be a good technician or good electronic tech, you will have to understand your components because that's the foundation. And then from the components, you, you understand, okay, if I put these components together in the circuit, it's going to work this way. And by doing that, understanding your component theories and how they work, and and you'll basically build on that foundation, and you'll you'll know, basically, when you see a board, you'll know that oh, this circuit right here is this because I'm familiar with these components in here, and it has it has this component, it has this component, 
right? If, if, it's, if it's in a linear power supply, I would say, whoa, it, it, okay, I have, I have a fuse, I have a transformer, it's going to my primary side, my secondary side, I'm gonna get, I have two, uh, basically windings on there, so I'm gonna get two voltage output, I'm gonna have uh, two bridge rectifiers there, I'm gonna have some filter caps, I'm gonna have some, I'm gonna have two uh, voltage regulators, and then some more filter caps on there, and that's my power supply. So if I look look at that, I know my components, how they work, and how they work together in a circuit. I can troubleshoot this a uh, power supply very, very easily, and break it down to each component and test each individual components um, by itself. Three is you can never learn enough. Right? You can never learn enough. If you're content on where you're at, you're gonna get left behind because this day and age where we're at, technology is moving so quick. Right? What we learned two years ago is obsolete. They're designing new and better uh, components. They have uh, they they have like like components that used to be large and now now they made made the packages even smaller and they combine different packages into a smaller package and you have to continually be learning so that you are bettering yourself and the more the more you learn the more confidence you're going to have and the more confidence that you have you're going to be uh, be able to do uh, more and troubleshoot more and take on more complicated things I, I once had a technician that used to work for me, and he, I mean, he had the the uh, know-how. Like, like he he was one of those guys that had critical thinking. You know, he was a problem solver. Uh, he also knew his theory, but he he was a student of electronics, and he was always on YouTube. He was always reading books. He he was always. Uh, tinkering with things like putting circuits together and just learning how they work together um, and learning things all the time and he he was one of my best uh, tech and unfortunately uh, someone found him on LinkedIn and offered him a way way better package and I couldn't convince him to stay so therefore I I lost him uh, to another uh, uh, business but either way, he was one of the best tech because he had all three of these. He pretty much um, had that mindset that he was a problem solver and he could solve problems and that's his job. And he understood how, how electronics work, the theories of it and, and a, a simplified way of, of understanding electronics. And third, he was always learning. So if you want to be a better electronic technician, I mean, focus on these three, three things first. And I guarantee you, you'll be better than the average electronic tech out there because I've done this for years and I've seen uh, electronic technicians come in and out. And the ones that don't have these, these three skill set, they're not that good of a technician. And they, they are either average or below average. And if you want to be a good tech, again, you got to have that right mindset that you're you're a problem solver, and that you're going to build upon that ability to solve problems. And number two, again, is to know your electronic theories and how they work. And then number three is you always have to be learning and dabbling with things so that you you are getting better on day by day. So if you want to be a better tech, uh, apply these to your life and to what you do and i guarantee you you probably you, you will probably uh, be the best tech wherever uh, you work or if you own a business you'll be better than your your competition or if you're working at a place you'll, you'll be one of the best there so uh, do these things and and be the best tech that you can be so if you like this video and you want to see more of these videos please subscribe if you haven't subscribed hit that like button and even hit that notification so that whenever I post another video, you'll see this, you'll, you'll see my next video. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, love you guys and 
looking forward to uh, interacting with you guys. So take care. Thanks. Bye.